Hey guys, so today we're going to be setting up a mini terrarium. Uh, different setup than usual, I know, but trust me, it makes things a lot easier because I'm going to have to bring you in really close to really see what's happening and like guide you through the steps. Um, I may or may not do voiceover. Um, I definitely will be adding uh, information on the screen as I go along. Um, I figured I'd just go over your, the supplies to begin with. Um, so obviously you need to choose a vessel. I have this uh, lovely... I think it's meant to be like a, um, like a kitschy homemade snow globe from a kit. Um, all I know is that it was really really cheap. Um, it is really cool looking um, and I want to use it as a terrarium again. After the last time I used this I let it dry out a bit too much and it kind of kind of flopped but that's okay. Uh, this time it's going to be a closed terrarium so just need to make sure it's got a nice spot with light and it will do the vast majority of the work for me. So obviously you're going to need a drainage layer. Now I've chosen to use uh, clay puffed clay balls or lecker. Um, this is this really small lecker. Um, I also use it as uh, an accoutrement towards the end of most of my terrariums but it's porous, um, it wicks water up and down, it's inert so it's a fantastic option for a drainage layer. You're going to need to cut uh, a separation sheet so something like mesh or fiberglass screen or uh, even uh, porous cotton uh, can work um, you want something that's going to last. If you use anything fabric based it's going to break down over time um, and you know maybe the root system will kind of act as a barrier at that point but I would rather just use something that's durable um, so yeah small piece um, I cut it I cut it to size um, to a small circle like so just to go over the drainage layer um, you're going to need a terrarium suitable substrate um, I will pop up now what the ingredients to the substrate are but as you can see it's uh, quite chunky and airy and fluffy um, it, in my experience it took a while to perfect a really good terrarium substrate that wouldn't degrade too fast and in my experience this one works really really well um, but it is a home blend so uh, you might have to source a couple different materials for it um, then I've got some freshly expanded sphagnum moss this is uh, super useful uh, to maintain humidity and that also provides a little bit of a little bit of a nutrient bump um, as it breaks down you're going to want to start choosing some hardscape um, for example here are just a variety of rocks that that can be used in terrariums, if it'll focus. So here are just a couple of varieties of rocks that you can use. There's like slate, uh, smooth pebbles, river rocks, crystals, all kinds of uh, fun little pieces of hardscape. And then I just have some extra sand in case I need to use it towards the top and you're going to want to pick your stocking in terms of plants pretty early 
So I have um, a lot of Salaginella apoda, which is uh, it's a species of Lycopodium, I believe, or Lycopodiaceae. It kind of is a micro fern, but it thrives in high humidity, and um, I find that it doesn't grow too fast compared to other kind of fern species so it doesn't become an overempowering mess too quickly. I've also got some uh, live sphagnum moss just in just in there if it will focus just in there um, only a small piece, I've got it soaking in some water just to keep it happy. Um, I have <clears throat> a, a tiny little Macody's Petala cutting as well as a little cutting of uh, Pele Glaucophylla which is uh, a phenomenal terrarium plant in my experience. I let them sit in sphagnum um, in a closed container for a couple days so that they've got a chance for the cuttings to start producing roots but it's not necessarily important if it's a closed terrarium they'll, they'll do the work for you and finally I have a bit of focus uh, a Drosera capensis that I grew from seed and I've got a couple more of these but I wanted to use them again in this terrarium So, tour wise I've got some tweezers, um, I've got some little mini spades, some longer plastic, like, sticky forceps, I guess, um, or more like kind of like placement rods, but still. Let's get started, shall we? Because um, it's, quite, it's quite simple, I think it will shock you how simple it actually is once you have all the materials together. So first we're going to add our drainage layer. Just make sure that's nice and even. Now, um, I like the drainage layer to be about a centimetre thick in small terrariums, but you can make it thicker. If it was an open terrarium and it was this small, I wouldn't necessarily even bother with a drainage layer. Um, then we're going to add our separation layer of mesh. This is where the tweezers will come in very, very handy. Now, don't worry if it doesn't totally cover your drainage layer. You just want it to have a majority barrier between the substrate and the drainage layer. Just so that in the middle, if there was a little bit of pooling water, it can kind of act as a cycle as opposed to being trapped with no access to any uh, fresh air, or even in a closed system. Now we're going to add a little bit of our terrarium substrate. Now the reason we're only adding a little bit at first is because we have got to arrange our hardscape as well. Be sure to use a little pokey stick just to even everything out and create a stable base for your potential hardscape. Now I'm going to keep this pretty simple most likely. Um, if this will fit, <laughs> I will try. Nope. Okay, so my backup plan from this pretty quartz was to use some slate pieces. Um, and I've got more than a few here. There we go. So I'm going to try and use um, some slate. Other options include cork bark, driftwood, bogwood, spiderwood, manzanita wood. Um, if you are collecting sticks and twigs from outside, I would recommend boiling them first, 
just to get rid of any potential pests because you'll be creating a small and closed system and it could be <laughs> problematic down the line if you introduce something you don't want to be there. So, I think I want you towards the back, facing this way. Or was it this one I wanted? This is the one I wanted. Yeah, there we go. I'll just take you in a little bit so you can really see what I'm doing here. So. We're just going to push the hardscape in to the substrate a little bit and don't worry we're going to be adding more to give it some extra support. Um, and there's no real rule in my opinion for how you want to do hardscape like whatever looks pretty to you because it is for you to look at so people say like the rule of thirds and sizes and like zonation on a micro scale I just if you're making a terrarium make it for you don't make it for anyone else, you know? We're just going to add this little one as a sort of separation wall just down the middle. And then I'm going to add this one in the very, very centre as well. Because I plan on putting the Drosera capensis there. So don't be alarmed if things are all a bit flimsy. Um, just make sure to add a little bit more substrate. And then you shouldn't have too much of an issue. And even if they are a little bit flimsy, um, give it a little bit of time. Just try not to knock it too much. Because this is um, a really high plant growth output environment. So they will grow roots really fast in here and kind of uh, structurally support everything a little bit. And if you get some substrate on the hardscape that you don't want to be there whilst you're final planting, just take your paintbrush, a little paintbrush, and lightly, lightly brush it off, just like so. And it will keep you A-OK -okay and on the clear for the future of the build. So, I think that might be enough substrate keep it happy. Um, oh, also I do recommend putting a little mat down or a dish just because you're probably going to spill some things um, and it's easier to just have something to just toss it away as opposed to having to wipe down an entire table surface, in my opinion anyway. So planting, we're going to take soft pointed tweezers focus there we go so it's soft pointed tweezers you don't want the sharp ones because you may very well stab and pierce the stems of the plants you're trying to put in there gracefully um, certain plants prefer to be planted directly into the soil whereas others may prefer to be planted on the hardscape like on the wood or the rocks or into sphagnum or into sand. So I'm going to start with um, the Drosera because this will be happily planted into the substrate and as we know it's going into the middle there. Let's see if I can't 
show you it in a bit of detail. They are really quite incredible little plants, sundews. I find them to be um, incredibly adorable. So, we're going to plant you just there. Um, when you're using small plants, they tend to have quite a small root system anyway, so you don't need to worry too much about creating a well in the substrate like you would when potting up. And we're just going to sort of sandwich it nicely and comfortably, like so. And I will add some chopped up moss to really push it into place there. If the moss that you have is a bit too uh, long, you can just take a pair of scissors, take the moss, and just start going down the clump slowly, and just slowly taking off little bits to create a fluffy mound that is much easier to manipulate and use. Okay. Just like this. Much easier to use. And then you can take your small tweezers again, take a little clump and just start stuffing it into the areas that you feel need a little bit extra support or anchoring. I'm actually going to put some behind the capensis as well. Really just lightly push everything into place. Uh, don't worry if you mess things up a little bit. Like Bob Ross says, there are uh, no mistakes, just happy accidents. My camera's going to die, so I'm going to turn it off for a hot second, and uh, let it recharge for a while. <coughs> the next thing we're going to plant is going to be the Macodes petula, which needs to be planted directly into sphagnum. So I think I'm going to plant it towards this side of the build. So I'm going to take some sphagnum and lay down an initial layer which I will flatten before we plant. It's important to remember that um, even a small amount of material will take up a lot of space in a build like this. So be a little mindful about how you use things and don't be afraid to kind of mush the mush the dryer goods down a little bit to kind of give it more of a shape. I find that in setups like this when you kind of put sphagnum somewhere it doesn't tend to move too much. So This little Macodes has a nice fleshy root right there. And I'm going to kind of anchor it with the predominant foliage facing towards the outside of the terrarium. done so, just take a little bit more of that moss that you've chopped up and just place it over the top of the root and then just anchor 
it all down with a with a utensil. Now oh, that should keep that jaw orchid incredibly happy for the foreseeable future. So I'm also going to plant this Pile Glaucophylla which when in the right light gets kind of a bluish tone to its leaves which I think is really adorable. I'm going to plant that just next to the Makodis. Just lightly push the stem into the soil and try to get the nodes in contact with the moss as they'll really appreciate that as the roots develop. And final livestock is this lovely piece of live sphagnum. Now I'm going to give it its kind of own area over on this side compared to the rest just because um, sphagnum grows pretty quickly in terrarium settings like this and I want to make sure that I can manage it, keep it under control. So, just there. And again, we're coming with our utensil, push it into place. Lovely. Now, I'm going to add a little bit more substrate to build up the front a little bit more. Now that I have comfortably built up the substrate, you can add your final touches to the terrarium. So I'm going to add a little bit of sand to the front, and this is just natural uh, riverbed sand, as well as some lecca, as I find it gives it quite a lot of dimension. Now, when it comes to using sand, it's important to be careful how you dispense it. So I'm going to very gently pour it in whilst angling the terrarium. That way I'm not disturbing everything too much. And then I'm going to go in with the utensil and just sort of smooth it into those nooks and crannies, into the moss, transition it into the soil a little bit to soften the edges. Okay, and then finally I'm going to add some lacquer. Sorry about that, my uh, memory card became full. So, we're at the final stretch now. I've just added some of the Lekka balls into it. And I also added some Salaginella to the back, as I forgot to do so earlier, but luckily I left it bare because my brain somewhat remembered. <laughs> um, and now comes the final touches. So. To keep this little ecosystem happy and healthy, first we need to add some water. Um, 
with the species in here, I would recommend distilled water, reverse osmosis, rainwater, which is what I'm using at the moment. Um, I would avoid tap water just because it will leave um, deposits on the glass and it's not very good for the plants. So just take your water, lightly begin watering inside. You want to put a sufficient amount to keep things humid inside. Um, I think probably around about four or five tablespoons of water we find to start this system off. And this is an important extra. Um, you don't have to do this, but I would heavily recommend introducing a cleanup crew in some form. Now, for something this small, there are very few options. You're pretty much only limited to springtails, which are those little white things you see darting about inside. Now all you do when you have springtails is you take a few on a piece of the charcoal and you just shake them, shake them inside and that keeps them... You only need about 10 or 20 or just a light shake to make sure you've got enough to start the ecosystem off and to make sure that if there are any there are any um, biodegradables that could cause problems that they are there to kind of clear it up they eat mold and debris rotting plant matter they are incredibly good at fixing nitrogen back into the system so I heavily recommend them now we're going to pop the little lid onto this and it's only very loosely fitting and um, I actually have this lovely little ceramic. They're supposed to be cacti seedling pots, but if you're growing cactus seeds, please don't grow them in such shallow, tiny pots. I use them for trinket trays, and in this case, as a way to hold and display my terrarium. So, I will now insert a nice close shot of everything set up and you can take a real look inside.